What's going on world? It's your boy Rip back with another episode of Wednesday Wisdom. First Wednesday Wisdom of 2017. In case you guys missed it last week, I announced that uh, I'm going to start doing it only once a month instead of every week. So it's the new year, 2017. In case you guys don't know, I also released just released a new music video featuring my homie Sincere. It's called New Me, which is the intro track to my new album Trinity. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, head over to my website or go to my YouTube or Facebook page. You can check it out over there. And um, it's a new year. Uh, you know, new year, uh, new things. Uh, a lot of people are, are motivated to, to um, start getting in better shape and, and start bettering themselves because it's just it's a new year and that's what people do. So with that, I wanted to give you guys my top 10 list of things in life that will help you succeed. These are things I've acquired and learned over the years. They're probably the best advice I can offer somebody. So I just thought I'd compile a list of my top 10 pieces of advice I can offer you guys to kick off the new year, to take into the new year, and to um, you know just strive to be the best version of yourself with. Because um, I, I think that's, that's key in life is to, to always um, be striving to be the best version of yourself. So with that, I'm gonna kick off my top 10 pieces of advice list for you guys right now. Number one, first and foremost, God first. Um, this is very important to me. Uh, I personally am a believer. I don't know if you are, some people are, some people aren't, some people are riding the fence. Um, but I found in my life that when you put God first and priorita prioritize God, um, you will succeed. I've covered this in uh, previous videos. You'll really succeed and thrive in life when you really put God first just because of everything that he teaches. Um, everything that he stands for. I've noticed personally in my life that once I put God first, I was able to thrive and succeed in areas of my life that I never was able to before because, you know, um, I, I've chosen him as, as the you know, as my guidance, as my leader, as my, um, you know, pretty much the way. Um, you know, when you say, you know, you wanna do things your way or you know better or you can, you know, it's your life and you wanna live your life for you, um, you're pretty much saying that I know better than my creator. Uh, whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in the Big Bang, Bang Theory, no matter what you believe in, the fact of the matter is something bigger and better than you created you, created the world you live in, um, created your parents, created everything around, created the air that you breathe. And, um, and, and like I said, whether you believe in, in an entity or an actual figure or someone, or, or, or someone who created that or not, uh, the fact of the matter is that something bigger or better did create you. So when you try to say that you know you know what's best for you and you know what is best for your life, you're pretty much saying that I'm bigger and better than whatever created me. I know I know more and I know better than than whatever created me, and uh, that's just not true. Um, if you think you know better than uh, than whoever or whatever created you, I urge you to go create your own civilization, create your own world, create your own universe, um, create all the other laws of physics um, that that created what created you, and then you can talk. So uh, that's my advice. Um, trust and lean on God, your, the creator, whatever created you, and um, use that as your guidance. I personally feel that you know God comes first. That will always be number one. So that's what I decided to do with my life, is keep God first, because he knows better than I do. He's my creator. Number two, educate yourself. This is huge. Uh, a lot of the things that I've learned in life didn't come from my, my, my schooling. It came from me teaching myself what I wanted to learn, what I needed to learn. Um, I became so passionate about music, video production, everything along those lines that I taught myself every single thing that I need to, to, to know right now to run um, the businesses that I run, to, um, to make the money that I need to make. Um, I've, I've taught myself better grammar skills and just so many things out there that, that um, I never learned in school or that, that I didn't pay attention to or that that may have um, slipped my mind. And educating yourself in this day and age is huge. You know, there's there's so much information out there. There's YouTube, there's Google, there's there's books, and it's limitless. I have a wealth of information at my fingertips that I didn't have growing up. And you have no excuse for not knowing or learning something because we're in a day and age where you can pretty much learn anything out there right now. And you have no excuse to not um, take the time to learn something that you're really passionate about or that you really desire to learn. Um, so there really are no excuses in life. Educate yourself. Number three, sugar is the enemy. Um, this is this is huge. This is something I learned in the, in the last few years myself. A lot of people think that um, other factors like uh, calories, 
overeating, trans fats, and all these different other sources are the leading cause of obesity and bad health. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is sugar is the number one culprit for all of that ahead of anything. You know, you've heard the three deadly poisons, you know, stay away from salt, sugar, flour, and that's, that's, that's huge. Sugar is one of the leading causes of obesity. It is the leading cause of obesity. It's the leading cause of disease. Um, processed, refined sugars causes mucus in your body. When, when mucus is in your body, you have an unhealthy body of an unhealthy system and that's when this disease thrives so sugar is a huge culprit in obesity and other diseases and um, and health problems I strongly urge you to highly reduce your sugar intake if not cut it out I won't lie to you I'm not perfect I still consume some things here and there that that have sugar in them I'm not perfect but I did notice in life when I cut sugar out of my diet, when I cut soda out of my diet, that's when I lost the most weight ahead of going to the gym or cutting fat or calories or anything else like that in my life. It was cutting sugar out of my diet when I really realized um, my, my health and my body and my physique and, and everything started to thrive and become slimmer, healthier, and, and more robust, more athletic. Uh, I've reached a point in my life where I was more athletic or in better shape in my life than, than I ever was, even when I was a teenager. So um, I'm telling you, cut sugar out of your diet, you'll solve a lot of problems. Number four, stop caring what others think of you. This is something huge. When I was a kid, I cared about everything that people thought about me. I, I cared about what I looked like, what people thought about my clothes, um, what they thought about my music, what they thought about just everything about me, you know, the way I looked, the way I acted, the way I carried myself. And it was a really unhealthy way to live. You're pretty much a prisoner of your own mind and thoughts. Not a good way to go. Um, 2008 is probably the time when I started to not care what people thought about me. I just came across a picture the other day where the first pair of shoes that I bought that were really flamboyant and they were out there, a pair of DCs that were hot pink and neon colors. To this day, I have a friend, Kenny, um, who is who became a friend of mine because the first thing he ever did was notice my shoes and he made a crack on them. And um, But that was about the time when I stopped caring about what people thought. I started wearing slimmer clothes and, and I started making different types of music um, than, than I did growing up and I just really stopped caring. And, you know, and when you stop caring, you stop becoming a prisoner of of, of pretty much your own mind and your own thoughts and your own limitations. Do yourself a favor and liberate yourself, you know what I mean? Stop caring what people think about you. It's your life. Nobody else has to walk in your shoes or live your life but you. So be genuine. Be yourself and stop caring what people think of you. Number five, perfection isn't attainable. This is something I learned the hard way. I actually, like I mentioned, I just released my new music video, New Me. And to be honest with you, it's not perfect. It's, you know, there's some things in it that I would change and I want to change. I, w I would have changed, but it just became, it got to the point where that, that video has been a work in progress for six months. I filmed it in the summer, in June. And um, it just, you know, there came a time where I was like, you know, I got to set a deadline. I got to I gotta get this done and I got to put it behind me. And I have to stop nitpicking everything. Um, because if I were to sit here and nitpick it and make sure it was perfect, it would take forever. I will never release the video. And it's been like that with every single video that I've ever put out. I'm never 100% happy or satisfied with it, but I'm okay with that. So learn to accept that. Learn to accept that perfection is never attainable. You'll never find a perfect partner. You'll never find a perfect lover. You'll never find a perfect spouse. Um, it's just not going to happen. It's it, it, Perfection doesn't even exist. There's only one one thing that's perfect, and that's Jesus Christ, you know, God. So trying to attain something that doesn't even exist is just going to drive yourself mad. It's going to drive you crazy. Stop searching and looking for perfection because it is not attainable. Number six, always be the bigger person. My mom just told me a very um, touching story when I was home for Christmas uh, a few weeks ago. When her and my dad got divorced, she never went after him for child support. Now, I'm not trying to tell people what to do with their lives. I'm just sharing my experience with you. Um, my dad was always a struggling entrepreneur growing up. Uh, I was struggling to to run his own Mexican restaurants, and um, he was never that great with money and, and business and the business end of things. So he never really had that much money. And the one thing that that really stood out about me about my mom was she never became a vindictive, spiteful woman. Uh, no matter what kind of differences they had or what kind of arguments or fights they got into, 
or no matter how much she despised him or hated when he came over, uh, she never was vindictive. She never, you know, she never did anything to hurt him or anything spiteful. And I really, really, I really, that's one thing I love about my mom is my mom is very loving. Um, you know, when we were growing up, it was a lot harder for her. and it was, it was very stressful being a single mom raising four boys and everything. I mean, um, she's a lot more calm now in her older years and when she doesn't have so much stress on her, on her uh, you know, shoulders. But I really give it to her. You know, she was a woman of integrity and she was the bigger person. She was always a bigger person. That's one thing she always taught us growing up is turn the other cheek. Um, that's, one, that's one lesson that my mom always taught growing up was turn the other cheek. So that's one thing that I learned in life. You know, be the bigger person no matter how much somebody else hurts you, no matter how much, you know, um, you want to, you want to, take things into your own hands trust me god is the vindicator god will take care of things it's not your job to 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 be karma um that will be handled all in its own be the bigger person always be the bigger person never be vindictive never be spiteful and just never set out to harm anybody because it's going to do nothing but harm yourself in the end so always be the bigger person number seven money is meant to be spent but still be responsible with it um I've learned a lot over the years about money. Uh, one thing that you cannot do is you cannot, and this is common sense, but a lot of people don't understand it. You cannot spend more money than you take in. That's very important. You cannot spend more money than you take in. You'll just get yourself in debt and you're chasing yourself, you're chasing your tail pretty much for the rest of your life. Uh, one of the most liberating things I ever did was a couple years ago was pay off all my credit cards. Since then, I've, I've made a few more business expenses, but uh, you know, um, but I've learned to manage my money. I've learned important things like your housing, your rent, your mortgage should not be more than a quarter to a third of your net income. So you know, don't spend more than you know, 25 to 30, maybe 33 percent of what you take home on housing. Um, just little things like that. Like you know, the knowledge is out there. You know, read Susie Orman books, look into that. You know, and learn learn how to save money. But again, never spend more money than you're taking in. Don't don't be irresponsible. Now, in this in the same token, money is meant to be spent. Uh, you can't take it with you when you die. Um, sure, you can pass it on to your kids and all that other stuff, and and when you die. But you know, what good is that going to do you? Uh, you know, that's your hard-earned money. I'm not saying don't save money or don't pass it on. You know, but what I'm saying is money is meant to be spent. You know, enjoy your life. One thing I have learned too is experiences by far outweigh material items so you know spend some money you know take some vacations go on trips spend it on people you love something that um that will make you feel good you know this last last month was my birthday we went out with my mom she bought us trans-siberian orchestra tickets i wanted to go it's been on my bucket list and it was kind of pr pricey it was a few hundred dollars and and one thing uh we always we also tried to tell my mom like no no you don't gotta pay it you know because she you know out of the whole family you know she's one with the least amount of money but but it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good to, to take your sons out and to do things and spend quality time with them. And if it's spending money, it is if it takes spending money, so be it. You know, she doesn't have a problem with it. But money's meant to be spent. That's that's what you work for. Um, just be responsible with it, though. Um, money is meant to be spent. Spend it on things you love to do. But but still, be responsible with your money. With that said, I'll bring me to number eight. Love outweighs anything in life. Love outweighs money. Love outweighs success. Love outweighs any sort of material possessions. Uh, it outweighs fame. It by far outweighs anything. Love is the most attainable thing you can achieve or gain in life, by far, hands down. So with that said, um, if you want to attain a successful love life, if you want to attain love in life, I strongly urge you, like I said earlier in this list, to educate yourself on love. Um, so many people spend their whole lives um, going to school for, spending money on, spending time, investing so much energy and effort into like degrees or careers and stuff so they can earn a nice living. But I rarely see people spending that much time and effort into love and relationships. The information is out there. Like I said before, the information is out there. Um, there's a wealth of information at your fingertips, books, YouTube, there's nothing you can't learn about love and relationships now. Um, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of bad advice out there too, but you have to find credible sources and find, you know, 
Uh, if you're that passionate about love and if you really want to succeed that bad in love, I mean, the information is out there. You truly can become successful in love. You honestly can. And um, you are in control of your love life, believe it or not. This is going to sound harsh, but if you fail in love, you honestly have no one to blame but yourself. So I urge you, strive for love, but also educate yourself on the topic. S spend time, spend money, spend um, any kind of resources you have to to learn what you need to learn about love. If you keep failing in love over and over again, I see so many of my close friends that do this and they it's like uh, spinning their wheels in, in dirt. You know, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So if you're that passionate about succeeding in love, educate yourself, learn things and spend the resources, time and energy into learning to succeed in love like you would your your career you wouldn't go into a test without studying for it you wouldn't you wouldn't pursue a career without going to school for it same for love it's the same for love number nine happiness isn't the ultimate goal in life this is one thing that makes me cringe all the time when i see people just say the pursuit of happiness or i just want to be happy in life unfortunately happiness is not the ultimate goal in life God doesn't call us to be happy. He calls us to be holy. I just came across a crazy awesome a acronym the other day. In fact, it was from my cousin that he posted on one of my, that he commented on one of my posts on Facebook. And it is joy. J-O-Y. Jesus first, others, then you. Jesus, others, yourself. When you put God first, when you put Jesus first, and then you put others ahead of you, uh, you will truly find joy i know it sounds selfish right now but if you do it the other way around it's just that it is selfish i also came across this awesome article the other day on pinterest and it's so profound and so simple yet so many people don't understand the power of it i want to read it to you and the name of the article is why i didn't choose a marriage that would make me happy and the line that got me the most was was this one right here she says when I married my husband, I told him, I will make you happier than you have ever been, but I will also make you sadder than you've ever been and madder than you've ever been. So basically this woman was saying, without the extreme sadness and the extreme hurt, you're not gonna have that extreme happiness. It's like equilibrium, you know what I mean? You have to have both to balance it out. Um, you're not gonna experience the most joy and happiness you've ever experienced in your life without experiencing the most hurt and sadness you've ever experienced in your life. It's crazy. I know a lot of people don't want to experience um, pain and hurt, but that's what makes us grow in life. So the ultimate goal in life is not happiness. God doesn't call us to be happy. He calls us to be holy. When you really can understand that, I think that's when you'll really start to thrive in life because if all you want in life is to be happy, then that's, that's just selfish, to be honest. Um, that's not thinking of anybody else but yourself. Think about how being selfish is gonna help you thrive in life. It's not. So, although God does want us to be happy and there are gonna be many, many joyous, happy times in our life, once you can understand the fact that happiness isn't the ultimate goal in life, um, I think people will really start to, 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 to thrive and in turn, be more happy because they understand that. I think when you're not looking for something, that's when you're gonna achieve it and, and find it the most. And last but not least, number 10, tacos are life. <laughs> no, this is not a joke, this is serious. Um, tacos are life, I love tacos. A lot of people in life think that tacos are bad for you. They think that you know they're fattening and that uh, they make them gain weight. Like I said earlier in the post, you know, sugar's the number one culprit in life that's really gonna um, uh, weigh you down, no pun intended, uh, when it comes to when it comes to health. Uh, but if you even look at Chris Powell, Chris P Powell is a famous um, uh, weight, a famous trainer, and he even has a show on uh, one of those reality shows. I forgot what network it's on, but he has a list of do eat and don't eat foods, and actually corn tortillas are on that list. Corn tortillas aren't are, are actually not that bad for you. They're not that fattening. Um, there's no gluten in them. There's not a lot of things that, that, that are terrible for you. So when you really think about it, you have, uh, and, and I'm talking about real Mexican tacos here. I'm not talking about tacos from Taco Bell or anything like that. I'm talking about real Mexican tacos, the ones with the corn tortillas, and then you got steak on there and then onion and cilantro and stuff. If you really think about it, um, corn tortillas aren't that bad for you. 
uh, the, the steak, depending on, on, on the quality or grade of the steak, um, some people may argue that red meat is not great for you. It may not be the best for you, but it's not it's not terrible for you either. I mean, it's not grade D cat food like you're gonna find at Taco Bell or whatever. And then you know some onion and cilantro on top. The you know those those are vegetables. Those are herbs from the earth. You know that's not gonna harm you. So um, I urge you guys to indulge in tacos. Don't feel guilty about eating tacos. Um, they're not gonna cause you to get obese. Uh, tacos are life, man. Those are my those are my vices in life. So feel free to indulge in tacos. Um, and I'm talking about the real tacos here, you know, none of this Taco Bell crap. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about when I say real tacos. So that's my take on life. Those are my top 10 pieces of advice for life, for you to thrive in life. Those are the things that I've learned over the years. Um, feel free to take my advice, run rampant with it in 2017. I hope it can help you, um, strive to be a better version because that's one thing that I teach and I push all my people in my life, uh, family members loved ones, friends. I'm constantly pushing people to be the best version of themselves because I love them, I care about them. Um, I will never try to hold somebody back. I will never try to hurt somebody. All I'm ever doing is trying to make people become the best version of themselves. So with that, I hope you can take this advice, these life lessons that I've learned, some the hard way over time. I hope you can take it into the new year and strive to be the best version of yourself and thrive with it. I love you guys, thanks for tuning in. Once again, I'm doing Wednesday Wisdoms on the first Wednesday of the month from now on. Um, I got my new music video, New Me, featuring Sincere, out now. Check it out on my website, my YouTube page, my Facebook page. Make sure you guys go over there, like, comment on it. It really helps. Um, share it. That's vital. Word of mouth is huge. I need you guys to share it and just spread the word. Let them know my new album is coming. Trinity is coming this year. Give me a few more. I'm wrapping it up here in the next month or two, and then I'm gonna start the promotional process. So make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. My third studio album, Trinity, is coming soon. Thank you once again for tuning in. I appreciate and love you guys so much. We'll see you guys next month. Now I'm striving to be what I should have been. Like I was born again, and Christ died for my sins. Man, it's never too late for one to search for within. Every day I pray, it's a brand new